So which one are you? The nice one? The Raleigh said they were going to be inviting some young ladies out here. I take it you're one of them. Yes, I'm Nancy Drew. And you are? I'm the head wrangler. You want a ride, you come to me. You prove to me you know what you're doing, I may just let you. How do I prove to you I know what I'm doing? First thing you're gonna do is never ride unless you're wearing a hat and gloves. And unless you got a full canteen of water, you can wear that hat over there. It's Mrs. Raleigh's. Got a helmet built right in. Her gloves are on the saddle you'll be using, and you can get a canteen from Shorty. Then you're gonna saddle and bridle your horse. No need to brush them. I do that when I bring them in. Then you're gonna lead them to the mountain block in the corral and mount up. Then I'm gonna ask you some questions. You can't ride outside the corral till you get all the answers right. Once I pass your test, can I ride any time I want? Long as you talk to me first. When you're done riding, you're gonna dismount, hook your horse up, take the saddle and bridle off and put them back where you got them. Always keep your gloves with your saddle. Which horse would you like me to ride? The bay over there. Name's Bob. If you get off when you're on the trail, don't tie your reins to nothing. Just drop them. And barring an earthquake or something, old Bob will stay put. May I go riding now? Nope. With the Raleigh's gone, the ranch is real short-handed. Before you ride, you're gonna have to go see if Shorty's got any chores that need doing. Gotta get a canteen from him anyway. Talk to you later. If you last that long. Well, hello there. Hey, you must be Nancy. I'm the cook, Shorty Thurmond. Welcome to Shadow Ranch. Come on over here and tell me about yourself. You have talked to the Raleigh's, right? Bet said something about a phantom horse. Do you know what she was talking about? Sure do. See, I was just about to crawl into bed last night when all of a sudden this glowing horse comes galloping up outside. It stops and rears and paws, whinnying and snorting. Then it just wheels around and gallops off into the night. It was Dirk Valentine's horse, you know. Now it's a phantom. Dirk Valentine? Dirk Valentine was an outlaw around here back in the 1880s. Legend has it he was in love with Frances Humber. She lived right here on Shadow Ranch. Unfortunately, her daddy was the sheriff. Ouch. Because of him, Valentine was captured and eventually hanged. Ever since, the ghost of his horse has been roaming the desert, cursing whoever sees him with bad luck. You don't really believe that, do you? All I know is, Ed Raleigh sees the horse, and what happens less than two minutes later? He gets bit by a rattlesnake. You do the math. Tex said I should get a canteen from you and see if there are any chores you'd like me to do. Music to my ears. First thing you can do for me is go out to the garden and pick all the ripe vegetables. You know what ripe vegetables look like, don't you? You bet I do. Good, because if you pick vegetables that aren't ripe yet, I'll be real ticked. You can put them in the vegetable basket that's hanging outside. And one more thing. Sometime today, I need you to build a cooking fire in the pit outside. I'll light it when I'm ready to start cooking. And be sure to fill the bucket out there with water and leave it by the pit. You know, just in case something catches on fire that isn't supposed to. The Raleigh's wanted to have a cookout tonight, and by golly, we're gonna have a cookout no matter who is or isn't here. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. It's so hot, I should Pick get these vegetables, vegetables into Shorty. Yet. You betcha. Good for you. Now, second thing I need you to do for me is take this, go out to the chicken coop and fill it up with eggs. Just be careful of that basket. It's kind of old. And don't forget to build me that campfire like I asked. Right. There. Am I good or what? There. Just call me Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. You talked to the Raleigh's? I sure did. Do you think Ed's gonna be all right? He'll be okay. Getting bit by a rattler's no picnic, but it sounds like he's out of the woods. Shorty told me about the phantom horse that appeared just before it happened. Did you see it too? It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Guess you're gonna be asking me a lot of questions, huh? I'm sorry. Am I bugging you? The Raleigh said you were a detective. Amateur detective. It's just kind of a hobby. I'm gonna be honest with you, ma'am. We were short a couple hands to begin with, and now with the Raleigh's gone and everybody on edge over what happened last night, well, this is not a good time to be visiting Shadow Ranch, that's all. The Raleigh's asked me to take something out to Mary Yazzie's, but it's in the den in the roll-top desk, which is locked. They said you had the key? Sure do. They gave me their key ring at the hospital. Great, thanks. To get to Mary's shop, just follow the trail that goes northeast out of the corral. 
Can't miss it. And I should probably warn you, she doesn't like the Raleigh's. How do you know? It's just the feeling I get when I talk to her, that's all. I'll let you get back to work. Appreciate it. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. Anything I can do for you now? Do you think I could get a canteen of water from you? Got one right here. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. That's not the right time. Must be broken. Bank robbers? Sounds like this Jane Nash person has it out for the Raleigh's. This doesn't look like it was ever opened. Once, so far so good. That should do it. There, one extremely well-built campfire, if I do say so myself. Need something? May I go writing now? Yep, if you got everything I told you you need, and you think you know your stuff when it comes to horses, old Bob's all yours. Talk to you later. No hurry. You got some friends. Come on, Bob. <laughs> I'm ready. Ready for some questions? I think so. Where's a horse's hocks? On its back legs. That's one out of ten. Ask me something else. Where's a horse's frog? On the bottom of its hoof. Two out of ten. Got a long way to go. Ask me something else. How tall is a horse that's 15 hands? Five feet. Three down, seven to go. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A gated horse. That's four right. Ask me something else. How can you tell if a horse is colicking? It keeps lying down, then standing up. That's five. You're halfway there. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A bay has black points. Bingo. That was number six. Ask me something else. What tribe bred the first Appaloosas? The Nez Pierce. Seven down. You're in the home stretch. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Its feet. Eight right. Just two to go. Ask me something else. What part of the saddle should you always check before you head out on the trail? The cinch. This here's your final question. I'm ready. What is a mule? The offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. Well, you answered all the questions right. And I can tell by the way you sit, you ain't gonna go falling off for no good reason. So you're free to ride outside the corral. Just don't go galloping all over the place. Cause if you bring old Bob back all hot and sweaty, you can kiss your cowgirl days at Shadow Ranch goodbye. Okay, Bob, what do you say we do some sightseeing? That trunk looks really old. I got the trunk open! Great, thank you. Go ahead and take something from it. You deserve a reward. or something. Hi, can I help you? Hi, are you Mary Yazzie? That's me. I didn't hear a car. Did you hike in or come by horse? I rode here. I'm Nancy Drew. So where are you staying? With Ed and Elizabeth Raleigh. In fact, I have something for you. Bet wanted me to give you this. Great. I want to buy a small piece of property from them. It must be their response. Bad news? They rejected my offer. Well, I guess that's that. But as long as you're here, look around. All the jewelry you see, all the rugs, the beadwork, the pottery, they were all made by local artists, including yours truly. So if you want to know something, especially if you want to know how much something is, just ask. Are there many petroglyphs around here? If you take the trail to Cougar Bend, there are hundreds. A lot of them were probably made by the Anasazi. They lived in the area until about 700 years ago, when they just suddenly picked up and left. It was great talking to you. Ride safely. What a beautiful horse. Uh-oh. 
O. I bingo. Green bottle under. Oh my gosh, Jane Nash is Tex's sister. And she'll be coming around the mountain when she goes. You old lady. I can't take any more. Where are you going? You can't leave. The Raleigh said we were to have a cookout and entertain our guest. Yeah, well, I don't call this entertainment. It's worse than whatever that stuff was you cooked. That was lamb ragu for your information, and it was great! If you couldn't appreciate it, it's because your taste buds are about as sophisticated as a sand fleas. I think I'll turn in, too. Night, ma'am. Next time, just stick to burgers. At two, Brute. You see that? You see what I put up with? Day in and day out, I cast my culinary pearls before ungrateful, uncultured swine. Well, I'll show them. I'll write a best-selling cookbook, that's what I'll do. Then I'll get my own TV show, then I'll do a movie, and while they're out here punching cattle, I'll become a gazillionaire. Oh my gosh! Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Ms. Purcell? Concerning? I'm staying at a ranch in central Arizona, and since she knows so much about the history of Arizona, I thought maybe she could answer some questions for me. Questions concerning? Well, I came across a very old trunk that might contain stuff that has to do with these people named Dirk Valentine and Francis Humber. Only I can't open it. Did you say Dirk Valentine? And his girlfriend, Francis Humber, yes. Huh. Oh, would you hold, please? Thank you for holding, and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss Purcell's latest novel, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. And like so many of her novels, it recently received the Catherine Coop Award for Historical Excellence. Reading a Charlena Purcell novel is like traveling through time to the Old Southwest on the wings of love. This is Charlena. Who is this again? Uh, Nancy Drew? Tell me about the trunk you found. Well, the lock seems to have something to do with this image that's engraved on the trunk right above it. Describe the image. It's this kind of abstract design made up of hearts and doves and the initials E-H and A-H. E-H would be Eldridge Humber and A-H would be Abigail Humber. Frances Humber's grandparents on her father's side. Her mother died when she was ten. Now, the picture no doubt commemorates their wedding day, which was... 4-9-11. April 9th, 1811. Why do you know so much about the Humbers? I've been running across fascinating tidbits concerning the Humber family and stashing them away for years. When I have enough tidbits stashed away, I may well write a book about them. Then you'd probably be very interested to know what's in this trunk. Yes, I would. And since I've helped you, or tried to, it's only fair that you help me, don't you think? Sure, I'll keep you posted. Did I mention that I'm staying at Shadow Ranch? This just gets better and better. I'll tell my assistant to put your calls through immediately. By the way, why are you so interested in the Humbers? Knowing more about them and what happened in the past may help me figure out something that's going on in the present. I'm kind of a detective. That makes two of us. I'll be waiting to hear from you. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Are you the sheriff? Yes, ma'am. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. Oh, yeah? I spent a good part of last night out there. I know. I never got a chance to talk to you. Is there something I can do for you? Would it be all right if I looked around in the pump house? Sure. I'm all done in there. Should I have my deputy take that sign down? Mind my asking why you want to look around? Wait a minute. Dave told me about you. You're the girl detective. Amateur detective. I don't know. Dave seemed to be real impressed with you. In more ways than one, I might add. Thanks for your help. You bet. Looks like the pipe is pretty badly corroded. Dave? Well, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Well, see, I just, I mean, I'm looking for Dirk Valentine's treasure. What do you know about it? See, my great-aunt Ellie was Francis Humber's cousin. 
When she died, she left me a bunch of stuff, including an old letter she'd gotten from Francis. In the letter, Francis said that Valentine had hidden a bunch of loot somewhere and wanted Francis to find it by following the clues he left for her. Francis was real smart, see? Loved puzzles, played the piano pretty good, too. Anyway, after Valentine met his end, Francis was too brokenhearted to care about some treasure. She told Aunt Ellie that if she could find it, she could keep it. I also found this picture. That's Francis's father, Sheriff Merrill Humber. There's something written on the back. Stairs to cellar. That's Francis's handwriting. Looks like the other half of the message got torn off. I was hoping that the treasure might be under the stairs in here, but no such luck. I didn't know this place had a cellar. As far as I know, no one does. The entrance is secret. These stairs lead to a secret door behind the bookcase in the den. What do the Raleigh's think about all this? The Raleigh's don't know. I was afraid that if I told them, they'd... See, my brother's dead broke. No job, health's bad. I was thinking if I could just find the treasure... It is their property. I know, and I'll tell them, I swear, soon as they come back. They got enough on their minds right now. What about all the accidents that have been happening around here lately? I don't know anything about that horse or any of the other stuff that's been going on around here, I swear. Now, if you'll pardon me, I need to tend to my chores. No, wait, you don't have to leave. Looks like I'm back in the mineral deposit. Can I help you find something? No, actually, I pretty much found everything on my own. For your information, I got those maps because I was hoping there might be a long-lost gold mine or two around here. But like most of my get-rich-quick ideas, it didn't pan out. Apparently, there's no gold left in them thar hills. Or silver, or copper, or anything else. Now, I don't ever want to catch you in my stuff again, yes? I'd like to apologize. Just proves we're birds of a feather. I've been known to go poking through other people's stuff myself. Got any chores you want me to do before I go riding? Do exactly what you did for me yesterday, and I'll be forever grateful. Start by picking all the ripe stuff in the garden again. Got them right here. Good for you. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Hello, Nancy. Guess I'm gonna be blushing every time I see you now. Don't worry about it. I've been known to do a few sneaky type things from time to time myself. Actually, I'm kinda glad you came by. Something I need you to do for me, if you wouldn't mind. You bet. This chicken coop's been a thorn in my side ever since I got here. The wire I need to fix the hole in the fence was supposed to be delivered today. But it's not here yet, and the Raleigh's just called and asked me to run an errand for them tonight. So if you could keep an eye out for that chicken wire, and patch that hole as soon as it gets here, the chickens and I'd really appreciate it. Are you going to tell me how to patch it? It's just common sense. You'll manage. Just be sure to wear gloves. I'll leave my pliers out. If you have to do it at night, that's okay. There should be plenty of moonlight. You'll be able to see fine. Just make sure it gets done, because if it doesn't, the coyotes are gonna have themselves one heck of a banquet, and you're gonna be in a lot of hot water. Great. Now, is there something I can do for you? Where was the jail that Dirk Valentine stayed in after he was arrested? Do you have any idea? Probably the one over in Dry Creek. It's a ghost town now. But the jailhouse and a couple other old buildings are still standing. At least they were last I saw. Is it far from here? On your way to Miriazzi's, look for the trail on your left that heads toward Shadow Mountain and stay on it till you get there. It's about an hour and a half's ride. This got something to do with the treasure? It might. Well, let me know if you need anything else. I'll let you get back to work. Appreciate it. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. I need you to do one more thing. It's Tex's birthday. The Raleigh's told me to make him a cake. Now, if I make it, he'll throw a fit. But if you make it, he might actually appreciate it. So why don't you dig a cake recipe out of the recipe box and have at it? I don't care when you make it, just so it's done by the end of the day. The icing's already made. Could I get a canteen of water from you? You betcha. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. First thing I'll need to make that cake is a mixing bowl.
Looks like I'm gonna have to guess how long to cook. Maybe I... I should what put are that these? icing shorty made I made on you it. that flour Francis mentioned in her recipe. I cut all the pieces out of marzipan using her old forms, but it's I'll be a tulip. I... What's this? That's food coloring, so you can paint that marzipan flower. You still here? You sound surprised. You and your friends, if they ever show up. You ain't gonna last more than three days out here. Why do you say that? City folk can't take living out here. Too rugged, too much work, too dangerous. Is it okay if I go riding? Nope. Feed the chickens and the horses in the corral first. Could be fatal if you mess up, so don't. Talk to you later. No hurry. Chickens, come and get it. Hi there. You two aren't too shabby looking either. Something? May I go riding now? Oh, Bob's all yours. I set up some barrels and a sawhorse so you can do some barrel racing and practice roping. Whenever you're out there, I'll watch you and time you. If you get good enough, like say, you get your time below 10 seconds. And if you can lasso the sawhorse, like say, four times out of five, I'll give you your very own lariat. You can practice as much as you want whenever you want. Just don't go walking off with my rope, cause I'll be watching. Talk to you later. Yahoo. Come on, Bob. <laughs> yes! Gotcha! Gotcha! Perfect! Congratulations! Here we go! Yeah! 9.5. How about that? You did it. All right. Now I can get my own lariat. I did the barrel race in under 10 seconds and roped the sawhorse four out of five times. Do I get a lariat? Yep. Here you go. I'm kind of surprised at you. Why? Figured you'd be good for some laughs out there. You weren't. But there's still hope. This little vacation of yours ain't over with yet. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. Come on, Bob. <laughs> that looks like Mary Yazzie. Beneath Cappy's keys, Cappy's name, please. Just a bird. Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. What can I do for you? I noticed that you put a lock on one of the buildings in the ghost town. Yeah, the support beams in there are about to go. 
I was afraid some dumb tourist would knock into one of them and bring the thing down, and I'd wind up having to dig them out. If I'm real careful, do you think I could have the combination? It's just an old shack. There's nothing to see in there. I'm just curious. Amateur detective, remember? I'll lock the place back up when I'm done. Well, if you swear you'll be careful. I'll be extremely careful, I promise. Let's see, where did I put that combination? Ah, here we go. Nine, two, seven, four. Thanks for your help. Just doing my job. Charlene of Purcell's office. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? She told me to put you right through. She even told me to make sure you didn't have to listen to that recording again. You really rate. Hello, Nancy. So what have you discovered? I came across a reference to someone whom Dirk referred to as Pappy. Probably his father, Kashmir Valentine. He was a blacksmith over in Prescott. Would Francis have known who he was? Oh, yes. Dirk worshipped his father. Which is ironic, because by the time Dirk was arrested, his father had pretty much disowned him out of shame. Talk to you soon. I'll be waiting. Looks like I need to put in a password. I'll bet I saw a design just like that in Cappy's. Maybe I'm supposed to do something with it there. Hi, can I help you with Maybe. something? I noticed some tuning forks over there. Would it be okay if I borrowed them for a while? Tell you what, if you go out and find me 10 arrowheads for this display I'm working on, I'll give them to you for free. You can put them in this. I already have 10 arrowheads, see? So you do. It looks like I only need 9 to finish this display. So here, keep this arrowhead. Thanks for your help, Nancy. Those tuning forks are all yours. It was great talking to you. Ride safely. Line reminds me of something. Looks like Mary Yazi and Tex? Tex must have turned the horses out for the night. This goes here. This goes here. There. Sorry, coyotes. No chicken dinner for you tonight. Oh my gosh, my gloves. They're glowing. That powder in the ghost town. Again? Was anything sabotaged? The power lines going to the ranch house were either cut or were otherwise disconnected from the house. You mean you don't have electricity? We have a generator. It's pretty noisy, but it sure beats the alternative. But listen to this. When I was exploring the ghost town, I got this powdery stuff all over my gloves. And last night, when it was dark, my gloves were glowing. Glowing? Like the horse? Exactly like the horse. Maybe it glows because someone rubbed some kind of phosphorescent powder all over it. And if you found that stuff in the ghost town, that must be where he or she has been hanging out. Which is why I think I'll go back out there first chance I get. And another thing, Dave was suspiciously absent during all the excitement last night. 
You better be careful, Nancy. If he and whoever's out at the ghost town are working together, they may decide you're a threat. I'll be okay. I'm more worried about you guys. Well, the fog has finally lifted, and they say we will definitely get out of here today. What they won't say is when. That's it for now. Thanks for calling. Bye, Nan. That horseshoe wasn't there before. Maybe the ghost horse threw it while it was running away last night. It's so hot, Nancy, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right night, away. I be long gone. I know I would be if I were you. Things aren't that bad. Not that bad. I'm in here with no water. I'm terrified to turn the gas on for fear something's going to blow up. And if that generator goes, I could be cooking in the dark for days. Weeks. Well, not weeks, because no way am I staying here that long. I'm so freaked out now, I'm not sure I can last one more day. Just hang in there. I have a feeling that all this is going to be over soon. Listen to you. Cool, calm, optimistic. I'm a wreck and you're a rock. Of course, you're also dead wrong and totally deluded, but I'm still impressed. Want me to do anything before I go riding? Same old, same old. If you bring me all the ripe stuff from the garden, I'll give you a basket to fill up with eggs. And once you're done with that, you'll be good to go. Got all the ripe vegetables right here. Good for you. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. Anything I can do for you now? Could I get a canteen of water from you? You betcha. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. Need something? Is it okay if I go riding? Nope. I took a bridle apart, oiled the pieces, and left them in that can on the shelf. You can't ride till you get the bridle put back together right. I put the bit next to the can. Talk to you later. No hurry. Okay, there's the head. This goes here. Now, let's see. That looks right. That looks right. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Perfect. Need something? I put that bridle back together. Now may I go riding? Yep. Talk to you later. If you last that long. Come on, Bob. Maybe this is the key to the jail cell. I'll bet that's the key. Come to Mama. Whoever clobbered me must have dropped this. There's a letter down there. Thanks for fixing that fence. What can I do for you? Did your great aunt, by any chance, leave you a ring? Sure did. It was her most prized possession. In fact, I got it right here. Seems to me Aunt Ellie said Francis had one just like it. I keep it on me for good luck. I know this is a lot to ask, but do you think I could borrow it for a while? Borrow it? What for? It's kind of a long story. Just take care of it, okay? I'll let you get back to work. Take care. Come on, Bob. I'm getting that definite feeling I'm not alone.
looks like a secret compartment. V. For Valentine, no doubt. Hi, can I help you with something? I found this piece of rock in the desert. I'd really like to get the scuff marks off of it. Looks like it's been polished before. If I put it in the polisher, it'll buff up in no time. Let me see what I can do. It's a picture agate. Great, thanks, Mary. It was great talking to you. Catch you later. That tree looks just like the one on the agate. I think I'll grab Bob and head out in that direction. I could lasso that tree branch and pull myself up. Yes! Ancient cliff dwellings. Awesome! That looks right. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. There it is, solid gold hearts. Uh-oh. Why, hello, Nancy. Find the treasure yet? So you're the one who's been sabotaging the ranch. That's right. Here my buddies and I went to all that trouble. Wrangling that horse, busting that pipe. Cutting those wires trying to scare people off the ranch so we could tear the place apart looking for the treasure. When all we really had to do was what I just got done doing. Follow you. You went to a lot of trouble for nothing. The treasure's gone. Well, now, I don't believe you, Miss Nancy. Oh, and by the way, it's too far to make it back to the ranch without a horse, and I just ran yours off. Which means you, to use an old cooking expression, are toast. That's what you think. Looks to me like the only way out is the way you came in, Nancy. So, ready or not, here I come. There's gotta be a way to stop there. Now I better Last hide. door. After I get the treasure, I'll deal with you. Whoa! You switched door markers on me, didn't you? That was downright mean, Nancy. I could have hurt myself. At least you can do is help me off of here. How about it? Nah, I think I'll go get the sheriff and let him help you off of there. Dear Hannah, it turns out that Shorty had ridden to the cliff dwellings on the Phantom Horse, which was really just a trick horse that a friend of one of his bank robber buddies had trained. Since my horse was gone and it was getting dark, I wound up riding it back to the ranch so I could call the sheriff. You should have seen the look on everyone's face when I rode up on a glowing horse. It looks like the phosphorescent powder that they used to make it glow was harmless, but Tex is taking care of the horse until he's sure it's okay. Mary Yazzie has straightened everything out with the Raleigh's, and now she comes over a lot, mostly to see Tex. He turns beet red whenever she's around. It's actually kind of cute. Speaking of cute, Dave confessed to the Raleigh's as soon as they got home from the hospital, just like he said he would. They not only forgave him, they even offered to split the treasure with him if it turns out they can keep it. Sheriff Hernandez is looking into it. The best part is, Bess and George finally got here, and we've been having a ball. Here's a picture of the three of us on our horses. Unfortunately, Dave took it. Guess he didn't realize his finger was over the lens. <laughs> See you in a couple of days. Love, Nancy. P.S. I started reading the Charlene Purcell novel Aunt Bet has, and you know what? I can't put it down.